While building and deploying a website, there are several tools that you'll need beyond a content management system. There are various applications that you'll need to help you work with web servers, edit files, and generally make your life easier. In this video, we're going to review some of the applications you should keep in your Webmaster Toolkit. Each of the applications we're going to review in this video are open source and can be downloaded and installed for free on your computer. I'm using a Windows machine, so I'm running a Windows version of these applications. There are equivalent tools for Macs and Unix computers. Some are included in the OS, and others can be downloaded. One thing that you'll find, though, is when you start using a set of tools together, you get used to having them. Yet there are times when you might not have access to your personal computer, or you might not want to install additional applications on it. To solve that problem, I like to maintain a portable copy of these tools so I can put them on a thumb drive or in a Dropbox. That way I have them with me at all times. I've gone ahead and created a package that you can download called the Webmaster Tools Kit. In a single download, you'll have all the tools you need. Plus, they're portable, so you can use the same apps and settings on multiple computers without having to reinstall. Simply download and copy, and you're ready to go. To download your own copy of the Webmaster Tools Kit, simply go to level10design.com WTK. Once there, just click on the Download button, and then select the archive that matches the OS you're using. I'm on a Windows machine, so I'm going to go ahead and click on this one. Do a save, and now it'll take a few minutes to download. There are quite a few files in this archive. Now that the archive is finished downloading, I just need to uncompress it. To do that, I'm simply going to drag it to my desktop. It'll take a few minutes for this to uncompress. Now that our archive is finished uncompressing, I can run the applications. I simply click into the files, select the app I want to run, and double-click an executable. So I've got running apps without having to do an actual install. It also comes with an interesting task toolbar that I like to use. And it's back at the root, and it says this P start. If I click this, it gives me this pop-up. Normally, I just like to use the smaller version. Down here, it just gives me quick access to all the different applications um, for working with my website. The first application we're going to look at is an FTP client. FTP clients allow you to transfer files to and from your local computer and a web server. The one that I like to use is called FileZilla. I'm going to go ahead and launch that now. The first thing you do is you want to put in the credentials of a website that you have. So I've already set up a website at Acme Example. And I'm just going to type in the information here. Put in the domain name. I want to do a normal login. Acme Exam is my username. And I'm just going to put in the password. And now I can go ahead and connect. And what we see is over here, I'm browsing files that are on my local machine. Over here, I'm browsing the server. And so if I go to the right place, for example, I go where my web files are, and I go over to Documents, I can simply drag and drop to transfer files from one place to the other. The next app we're going to look at is a terminal emulator. These are also called SSH clients or Telnet clients, depending on what protocol we're using. Terminal emulators are a way for us to work with the web server at the command line level. Using command line and the right credentials, we have full control over our server. On a Windows machine, I like to use one called PuTTY. And I should say that on a Linux machine or a Mac, you don't actually have to download a separate terminal emulator because it's built into the OS. But we do on a Windows machine. So let's go ahead and log into our example website. We type in the URL we want to log into, and then we type in our credentials. Put in my password. And now I have access to the command line of our server. And I can use Unix commands to do various different things. Of course, the drawback is, if you don't know any Unix commands, then you might be better off using FTP to transfer files, although ultimately you might run into some things that you can only do through a terminal emulator. SSH and FTP clients are our must-have apps. But there are many more nice-to-have apps. Let's do a quick look at what some of these are. The first are various web browsers. Now, it might seem a little odd that we want to have multiple browsers on our computer. Most people only have one, probably was ever installed when they first bought it. But web developers love to have multiple browsers. There's a few different reasons for this. One is that in a CMS system like Drupal, sometimes it's useful to be logged in as multiple people at once and to see things from their viewpoint. Having different browsers allows us to do this easily. We can log in using different ones and switch back and forth. 
The other thing is that a lot of times you want to know what your website looks like and acts like in different browsers. And of course you need to have them to test. The third is that there are some advanced tools that are offered in different browsers that different designers like. So for example, in Firefox, there's a tool called Firebug that a lot of designers really like to use. It allows them to dig deeper into the code. With a system like Drupal, there's an awful lot you can do without coding. However, if you want to dig into the code, you're going to want a good editor. I like to break editors up into two classes. One are lightweight text editors like Notepad++ that are pretty good at working with text type files similar to a word processor. The other are the more advanced integrated development environments like Genie. These are built to work with code, and as you get more technical in your skills, you're going to appreciate some of the advanced features they have to offer. The last tool I want to show you is called an IRC client. IRC stands for Internet Relay Chat. It's actually decades old. In fact, it's even older than the web itself. But it's a place where technical people still get together and talk about various subjects. Drupal has many different chat rooms, and all you need is the IRC client to access it. These are places where very knowledgeable people hang out, and many people can use it when they get stuck as a lifeline. I will say, though, that there is some netiquette you need to follow, which you can learn more about that at drupal.org slash IRC. In this video, we looked at a lot of utilities to help you master your website. While only a few are must-haves, there are numerous others that are good to know about. The good news is that often you can find these tools for free, although it may take a while to download and install them. That's why we also took a look at the portable Webmaster Tools Kit. It provides us with virtually everything we need in a single download, and it's free.